the best disease is one that you can prevent. And if we can understand the fundamental defects that lead to the development of melanoma in horses by identifying the critical genomes, because cancer is a disease of the genome, eventually we'll prevent it. Selective breeding, breeding for horses that have a more robust genome, that have the ability to suppress this disease. Just recently became acquainted with a family of quarter horses, gray quarter horses, aged up to 32 years within this family. None of them have melanoma. So the fact they don't have the disease says there's something interesting about them. Well, and until we can figure that out, we're going to have to do something about it. So we treat equine malignant melanoma in a variety of ways right now. Surgical resection of small tumors on the perineum is generally considered to be effective, although people that deal with uh, treating horses, particularly surgeons, have a reluctance to cut this neoplasm. And again, one of the things besides this idea that, well, it's a benign tumor, but we don't want to cut it because if we cut it and try and remove it, it might become irritated and it might spread and it might metastasize. There's, there's kind of a, a paradox here with, well, if it's benign and you cut it out, it should go away, versus if you touch it, okay, and it spreads throughout the body, it's likely to be malignant. So I just wanted to point that out. No published literature to support a fear of surgery in terms of progression of metastasis. Rowan Sullins at uh, Leesburg and at, at Virginia Tech followed horses for two years after resection of small perianal tumors, found no sign of recurrence or complication. And surgical excision of extensively infiltrating masses, the ones I usually see, okay, is difficult and is rarely pursued. And I think you can appreciate the fact that uh, surgeons might be uh, amenable to uh, touching this lesion or this lesion. But when you're starting to get to these, maybe not. Okay, another lesion right here. This would be a good one. Um, you're not going to help these horses at all. Things have gone too far. And the question is, why did they get this big? You're also not going to help these horses. This is Mr. Dudley, age 17 years, and you can appreciate the fact that Mr. Dudley has lesions on both sides of the head up here around the base of the ears. He's got it in the parotid salivary gland down around the neck, infiltrating the musculature behind the shoulder, about the size of a dinner plate, and all around his anus. And if you ever doubt that this is a tumor that likes to spread, here it is in the omentum of a horse in which it actually is spread by infiltration from the perineum into the inguinal canal and then metastasizes spread widely throughout the abdomen, the definition of a malignancy. We've done two things to try and treat these more difficult lesions. Several years ago, in fact, just after my last visit here to Gluck, we started a trial of a botanical product, frankincense oil, as a cytolytic for the treatment of melanomas. And within the last year, we've actually evolved a treatment that involves uh, essentially electrocuting tumors. It's called irreversible electroporation. Um, the botanical oil product project started out because at Wake Forest, the collaborating institution that we deal with, they took many, many things that are natural products and screened them against huge banks of cancer cells. And they found that some of these things like tea tree oil and lemon oil and some things that were reported to have medicinal value did in fact kill cancer cells. The one product that really came up very strongly in all of their assays was frankincense oil. And frankincense oil is anti-inflammatory, it's antifungal, it's analgesic, it's documented use in the medical literature is over 4,000 years. It was commonly used to treat skin lesions in people in ancient Egypt because of these first properties, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, uh, and analgesic, uh, topically astringent, and there's a good reason why the three wise men brought it as something of value at the birth of Jesus because it's a powerful medicinal. Frankincense oil is derived from the distillation of gum resins from trees, Boswelli carteri and freriana. It's a very complex molecular mixture. People always that are doing cancer research go, what's the active principle? What's the thing that you really want to get at? Well, it has about 200 things in it, combinations of terpenes, boswellins, and other molecules, many of which probably have a fostering and synergistic effect uh, in creating a medicinal anti-tumor effect. We did a phase one, phase two National Cancer Institute study. We applied frankincense oil either as a topical medication to melanomas in horses or injected it. 
We picked horses that had at least two lesions on them so that we could treat one as the control for that horse and one as the tumor. We picked ones that were the same size. As the control, we used sesame, toasted sesame oil, so it smelled like we were doing stir fry back in the barn. We dosed them one or two times daily, either by injection or topically. We confirmed all of them were melanomas by pretreatment biopsy. We treated them for 14 days. We measured and observed the rate of tumor growth and regression, and then we re-biopsied at 14 days. Um, here is the first horse that we treated, Chili Witter. Um, you can see under Chili's tail that we've got lesions that are present. Here we've injected the lesion with frankincense oil. Five days after injection with this oil, marked cytolytic activity. These horses generally have edema. The area becomes inflamed. If we're lucky, it opens up and ulcerate. It bursts. The first time this happened, it scared the crap out of me because this horse has basically just burst and issued forth all this black stuff down his perineum, down his legs. And we're going, oh, this is bad. And then I realized it's all dead tumor. It's all melanoma that has been lysed. Um, we can see that we get this profound inflammatory reaction. We get gunk. We get this ulcerating lesion. This is after about two weeks. And then when we go back and look at it, melanoma is gone. We've done this in about 20 horses where we completed the entire protocol. We varied the dosing with some of them. The horse that we've had the best success with, we treated for a period of about eight or nine months. He had a melanoma that was causing fecal impaction about the eh, size of both hands, and it was reduced down to this. Now, why isn't this in the literature? We want it to go into a peer-reviewed journal where it can be reviewed by oncologists before we get another natural product that seems to offer some hope to horse owners. We want something that's solid science. So we're studying the molecular mechanism of this. We know it's a modulator of aptosis cell survivability. We know it's cytolytic and we understand the side effects and the dosing protocol. We've also used more recently